Good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome to Couch Combo with Coach Carla, where I give you motivation and information to help you make your very best personal transformation right here on Facebook Live on Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. Central, as well as on Sundays at 1 p.m. on 104.1 FM. W-A-V-N, the trend. Thank you for joining me. We do have a special guest with us. We want to welcome Dr. White. Welcome, Dr. White. Thank you. I'm glad to be here, Carla, Coach Carla. Glad to have you. So let me give people a little bit of an introduction. Charnay is obsessed with connecting people with themselves, each other, and God. Several years back, when she embarked upon her counseling journey, she centered around the vision that all people can evolve from healing to better and better to well. Within a few years in the field, helping children, parents, and helping children, parents, the grieving and striving, Charnay by Grace, or SBG was birthed. Yes, I love it. Devotional (laughs) writing one-on-one and group therapy approaches allow her calling to manifest in the lives of others. Dr. White believes that a person who lacks direction is as a pencil with no point. Both have endless possibilities when sharpened. Sharpening the direction, sharpening the direction of individuals, families, organizations, and businesses encompasses the mission vision, values, and goals of Charnay by Grace. Welcome again. So welcome to our guests. Welcome to our guests. So tonight we are discussing avoiding burnout, avoiding burnout. Last week I addressed avoiding pandemic burnout and most certainly COVID and the pandemic have impacted all of our lives. So I wanted to make sure that I was giving some support in this area. Um, This is something that we've been going through for a minute now. And we're going to transition now into looking at uh, professional burnout or burnout overall. Uh, Charnay, Dr. White, are you seeing many people in your practice who are burnt out? Are you seeing many people in your practice who are experiencing burnout? Yes, Carla, I actually am. And again, thank you for having me uh, this evening. I I have been thinking about this all week, uh, just talking about it with clients and even coworkers. Um, There's this saying going around during COVID, you know, people are dying who never died before which is Mm. an interesting statement, but I get it because there has been this unexpected um, passing of Mm. loved ones. And so that is different. And uh, and it's so unexpected that you can't really brace for it. And people are burned out that have never been burned out before. Mm. Uh, There have been a lot of interesting studies. I found a couple online. One in particular came from Indeed, which is the huge job finding conglomerate and Mm -hmm. 7% of increase of older adults are burned out. And so they, they are people who typically kind of, you know, put the the pedal to the metal. They stick with whatever they're going through. Uh, They're looking forward to their retirement and they're stopping early people, educators, medical professionals, um, even those in politics, community organizations, people are saying, I'm tired of being a perpetual volunteer. I'm I'm just worn out. And COVID, I don't think it was necessarily COVID that burned them out. Um, But I know amongst my clients, it was just having time with themselves to realize that I am burned out. That's half the battle is just acknowledging that this is happening. So I definitely have seen an increase both professionally and personally. People don't even want to be parents anymore, you know, let alone work the job that they're working. And, and I, and I, I have to affirm my clients when they feel that way. So um, definitely an increase in um, that level of frustration in people's lives. Yeah. Um, that slowdown did give the, the initial slowdown when um, we 
well, everything just kind of just stopped for a minute uh, at the very beginning uh, when we were social distancing and uh, people did have a chance to see that when they were home, hey, I was more stressed than what I realized. So I have seen that with some and it is very impactful, the statement people are dying who've never died before. And uh, most certainly in my practice, I'm seeing um, I'm actually dealing with um, a lot of clients who are dealing with grief. People are still losing loved ones to COVID. Um, We mm, it's a little disturbing to me that we don't hear about it on the news as much. It's kind of being passed over a little bit, Um, but it 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 is still a daily experience for many people, many people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Is there an area of life where burnout seems to be more prevalent? You know, we think about work, home, even church. Is there an area of life where burnout seems to be more prevalent? You know, Carla, in my experience, the answer to that is no. Um, both personally and professionally, um, people do tend to get burned out at work. Um, because they, they like to work for their, for their family. Mm -hmm. And so, but I do think that, you know, there, there's this Facebook post going around about how, um, and I see mostly women posting it, you know, the amount of time they spend in their driveway, (laughs) you know, before they go in the house and single people do it, married people do it, you know, um, grandparents don't want to walk in to deal Mm -hmm. with grandbabies after having to do whatever, you know, everybody is experiencing different things. It's not just personally or professionally. It's not necessarily, um, there are some people who have decided that even going to their church service online is, is has, has become stressful for them. Um, mm-hmm. And having to learn how to navigate a new environment of worship or a new environment of work. Mm-hmm. Um, nobody had any prep work. And I was laughing with somebody the other day, you know, 2019 fall, I was at homecoming and Thanksgiving and all the, we were just spreading COVID, you know, we weren't the wiser, just (laughs) out here. And next thing you know, everything is shut down. But even outside of COVID, um, you know, as I, as I was going through um, this survey by Indeed, 80% 80% believe the, the pandemic had a lot to do with it, but 13% believe they are better off, you know, mm. because of COVID. And so okay. it doesn't necessarily have, just because people are experiencing it, experiencing it doesn't mean everybody is experiencing it. Some people have gotten, gotten a jolt. Mm. Um, and it's not working for you. And so I, I just think that um, we don't want, and I say that tenderly as a therapist and as mm-hmm. a school counselor, I don't want to have my own thinking in mind when people come to me and say, I'm just burned out from, you know, this, these small tasks that I have in my day, every, mm-hmm. what's important to you is important to you. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and surely, you know, there's, there's more areas of life that can get more focus, um, maybe deserve more focus, but yeah, it could be anything. Yeah. And um, a lot of people did have an opportunity to uh, reprioritize their lives. So I I, I know with that re, re, reprior, reprioritizing everything, mm-hmm. then that uh, possibly brought on some different responsibilities. And life does look very different for a lot of us most certainly looks different for me. I'm still doing teletherapy from home and uh, it's just a different experience. And I, I, I too am one who sits in my driveway uh, <laughs> organizing my life because it is one of the quieter places yeah. uh, that in the restroom, but the, just sitting in the car, people, people don't tend to bother you. But I, I've also been cautioned that it's not, not necessarily safe either. Um, as people have started, unfortunately, um, I'm going to say, I'm trying to say it really nice, but they've started assaulting people in their driveway. Um, Yeah. yeah. 
So we just have to be careful and watch. And carbon, it. carbon monoxide. I mean, it's it's so easy um, mm. just to pull in your your uh, garage and not really think about you know how long your car has been turned off. I mean, mm. those things do happen, but you know, if you're careful and your car is your place of peace, especially if you're burned out. Yeah. You might need that extra five minutes. And I, I find out, I find with burnout, don't toil with yourself. I don't care what area you, you're burned out in. If you need to take your piece, take it because it will not be given to you. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. What are some of the signs of burnout to you? What are some of the Ooh. signs of burnout to you? You know, um, I did sit and think about this because I think there's some overt signs of burnout and then there's mm. some more covert signs. So All right. typically we think about burnout like we think about sadness and depression, um, fatigue, lack of interest, giving excuses for things that you don't want to do. Um, and you're just saying, no, it's not that I don't want to do them. I just I have this going on and, mm-hmm. and I got that going on. But there are more covert things like focusing on other things. Mm -hmm. You don't realize how you've drifted away from um, a relationship or Mm -hmm. how you've drifted away uh, from your profession, because now you're starting to divest your time in something that is more profitable because it's investing back into you. Mm -hmm. And so um, one tall tale sign that it's time to, make some different choices, at least for the season that you're in, is you're not really doing it with fidelity. Mm. Um, You're doing it because you feel obligated or I'm 25 years educator. Mm. Uh, I have a friend, 20, 27 years, 25, 27 years in education, made a bold decision to leave. Mm -hmm. She was burned out. Yeah. Love children, still tutoring, has her own company had been doing that all pretty much as, as long as I've known her last six or seven, eight years. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, it's just one of those things where she just saw the writing on the wall. It yeah. does, it's not that I don't love to teach. It's not that I don't love children. I cannot do it in this context. Education has burned me out. Mm-hmm. And acceptance is the first place to start when you see the signs. Um, last thing, willingness to lose income. Ooh, okay. That hit me hard. And I'm just being transparent, team transparent right now, because when you have sat and thought about, I could live without this money. I could figure out how to navigate my life without this money. Yeah. Whether you've articulated it to someone or you've said it to God or just to yourself, Mm -hmm. you are burned out. You're tired. Mm, um, yeah. and that, that's a sign that either you need to stop doing it or you need to pause. Um, mm-hmm. you don't have to quit life or quit a situation in life to pause it, to regroup and decide if it's something that you want to continue doing. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You, 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 you probably hit on some toes right there. Probably. Wow. Yeah, especially (laughs) with the um, loss of income. But that goes back to keeping what's important, keeping that uh, in the forefront. And most certainly your health, your physical health, your emotional health, your mental health are more important than finances. And I'm pretty... Yeah, pretty sure that God sees it that way, too. God is much more concerned about us as a being um, than he is about. um, mm, I'm going to say I'm going to say then he is about finances. I think it's stewardship, I think. Mm -hmm. And and I'm just speaking from a Christian's perspective, Um, growing up in the church and, you know, staying the course, being consistent, not quitting all of that sounds like somebody, anybody who doesn't want to do those things could be typically burned out. Mm -hmm. But um, if your stewardship is attacked, if Mm -hmm. you feel like who you are as a parent Mm -hmm. or a professional, entrepreneurs get burned out. Um, They have put to the world, social media, 
their family of the strangers on the street, you know, that this is who I am. And this is, you know, I have this calling or else, you know, I got this business idea Yeah, and you can't, you feel like you can't turn back because of the stewardship that, you know, you have to the, to the calling, but a calling, you can also be burned out on a calling. Do you think for whatever reason that you, God would want you in a purpose that burns you out? Or mm-hmm. if he gives you a purpose and you get burned out by it, that he wouldn't give you time to regroup. I mean, what mm-hmm. kind of God do you think you serve? Right. And so I think when you think about it, you know, as 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 a Christian woman, or even if you're a person who, you know, may not feel like you're a person of faith or religious, you mm-hmm. could just have some values that have been handed down that it's ne- it's a negative thing for you to be burned out. You don't have a right to be burned mm-hmm. out. And that yeah. is a real systemic problem in a lot of communities, not just the black community. Yeah. White people yeah. are suffering. Um, Hispanic cultures are suffering because they, they've been in all kinds of civil um, situations that they're trying to advocate. It's hard. Mm-hmm. You, God mm-hmm. gives us time to regroup. I mean, that's, I, I cannot say it better than that. You have to give God an opportunity to show you that it's okay to climb into his arms and say, I'm, I'm yeah. tired. Can yeah. you help me, God? Work through yeah. this. Yeah. And, and, and coming from a Christian perspective, God set the example of rest for us in the creation with on the seventh day, resting. Mm. So that's that's what I keep in mind when yeah. um, I get questioned about rest and whether or not we can rest or not. And honey, let me tell you something. I have started taking naps too since we've been going through this pandemic and it's much needed, much needed because more is required of me emotionally as a therapist, more paperwork is required of me. So if more is required of me, then I need more rest and boo boo on anybody who got a problem with me taking a nap. Yes, ma'am. Listen, I've been to Italy twice. And one thing I know about it they have that little siesta in the middle of the day. Yeah. I'm telling you, it'll make you want to change countries. You yeah. understand? Yeah. Having a nap in the middle of the day, go home, eat with your family and come. I was just tell, sharing that with a friend. Yeah. Like these people live and no matter how long they live, when they mm-hmm. when they're alive, they're living on purpose. Yeah. So yeah. I am definitely for napping. But sure. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, there's a movie um Eat, pray, love. And in that movie, Mm. everybody knows I love that movie. But in that movie, uh, the Italians tell the Americans that they don't know how to live. Mm. It was it was it was something was said like y'all are living, but you don't know how to live. And so it was just very it really it really uh, struck me. So stirring. Struck me and stuck with me. Yeah. Mm. And I and and, and Charnay knows this because both of us are Fisk Jubilee singers. Um, I had a chance to go to Italy as well, and that was very like they didn't play; they closed up shop, and that was Damn. very very much so a, a part of their life. Eating and I guess taking a nap during that time period too, and then coming back to work. So. That's that is self prioritization, but not only is it self prioritization, but it's also uh, that word that I love to hear Charnay say. What is the what's the word? Uh, self preservation, self preservation, self care, selfie. I don't know what it's I say. Another, about it's myself. a word. It's a, it was a <laughs> word that you said, and I felt like it was the first time that I heard it used in that way. But it's 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 self preservation, sustainable. This is the only way that um, you're going to be able to live, um, Mm. enjoy your life and keep going is for you to have some sustainable practices. But yeah, Yeah. that was the word. That was the word. Dr. White. Uh, (laughs) Sustainable. (laughs) Definitely. For those of you who don't know, um, Charnette and I attended college together. And at that time, I considered her to be my little sister. She is no longer my little sister. It looks like she transitioned into be the big sister now uh, because she recently obtained. She says, no, 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 no. She recently <laughs> obtained her doctorate in um, explain that explain that uh, specific 
title to them, uh, Charnay? Sure. Uh, I don't know if you remember this gospel song back in the day, but it says, no matter how high, no matter how gay, I'll still be looking up to you. I so thought that that's was, how I feel about Coach Carla. <laughs> that was in the, that, I thought that was in the R&B section. I didn't know that was in the gospel uh -oh, section, but you know, wait a minute now. you know, now, Crossover. now, yeah, now it would be, it would be played on either, but I love that song. I love that song. No matter how high I get, still be looking up to you. Um, yes. you know I'll say, I'm not sure if Bobby Womack, yeah, I gotta look that up now. Who's, who's song? Yeah, Bobby Womack. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Oh, it's not on she, the top uh, of my <laughs> Some, so our, one of our audience the Barnes says, family look at the that Barnes is that family. who it is okay oh, I wow. bet you thank but you there's, for that but there's also an R&B group uh, who uh, recorded that as well so yeah yeah all right yeah. And, well yeah it, it's been a journey and uh, I think it's very um, appropriate to talk about my my doctoral journey when you're talking about burnout um and I, I think that the journey itself didn't really burn me out. Uh, I felt I got a lot of energy from it. Uh, I love mm -hmm. research. Um, I have done a thesis of some sort uh, in every master level or doctorate program. Mm -hmm. This, And of course, even at Fisk, I had really uh, capstone projects that I had to complete. Mm -hmm. So that part was not i i live like i breathe that even to this day i don't know if i could ever be burned out by that because i just it's always new it's always fresh it's always based on what's happening in the moment and that's what research is it's a discovery process mm -hmm. but what i discovered about myself in the process is that um when i got to the end there was this well, where do what do I do? And they mm -hmm. call it like a postdoctoral uh, depression, a postdoctoral sadness that kind of comes. You you've been on this, you know, all this inertia. And I think that people in some ways are experiencing almost the opposite. Like they were really driven uh, over the last couple of years. They have been really passionate. Um, they feel more purpose in what they do. So not everybody's burned out by what they do, but they're burned out by the stopping of so much of the calamity. You know, it kind of lit this fervor behind us. And I know for me, um, I, my doctorate is in next generation ministry, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. I've always worked with children and youth, mm -hmm. um, youth pastoring, children's ministry. Then I switched over to school counseling, elementary, now middle school. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have worked with young adults as well as singles, um, single young adult ministries, all types of types of things, even the books that I write. For me, um, this was just the logical next step. And it felt right. And I believe that it was right. Definitely has catapulted my career, um, mm -hmm. given me some esteem um, to my to, to myself, my person. Mm -hmm that was not there before, but it was always in me. And I think that that's one of the things that I had to come to the conclusion like, and, and, and I believe that anybody who is becoming something already is that. Mm. It's just a matter of manifestation. All right. So I when that. I got to the end of the doctoral program, um, I was experiencing some symptoms of being burned out, but it was more like, what happens after the storm, you know, mm -hmm. after everything settles down and what you've been striving for, a good portion of your life has come to pass. Mm -hmm. And um, I probably am not the only person out there like that. The doctoral program is not the only situation like that. But what I, what I will say that I learned is that it's OK to rest with yourself mm -hmm. um, when you feel like there's no no tread on your tires. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't grip the road in your life. It is OK to pull over yeah. and get get your tires retreaded. And some tires cannot be retreaded. They got to be jumped. You got to get some new tread. Yeah. And that's kind of what what I what I figured out that. If I didn't keep going, then it is something something really bad would actually occur, because when you come off a high like COVID or when you come off a high, like a doctorate, 
Mm -hmm. um, you could get really low if you're not mm -hmm. careful. Right. There's not a lot of doctors rolling around. Even, you know, it, it takes a lot of inertia to do that. There's no shade on anybody else's accomplishment. Mm -hmm. But um, I give my hats off to every profession with a terminal degree um, because it you know, people say, well, why did you even have to go through that? Well, listen, mm -hmm. thank God somebody's doing it mm -hmm. because we need some professionals out there. But at the end of it, you don't always have plan B or your mm -hmm. next A plan, I guess mm -hmm. is what it would be because you you succeeded in your A plan. Then yeah. what? And so uh, I had mm -hmm. to keep moving. And that's when I decided to open up my private practice. It wasn't because I, you know, I'm a doctor now. So now I need an office. no. I had to make a, a new A. And when you're burned out, it's not about, okay, well, I didn't have, all I had was a plan A. Now I need a B. No, you just need a new plan A. And Come it can now. be anything, anything you want it to be. It doesn't have to be the same or you can break and you can, like my, um, my pastor, Craig Oliver used to say, Dr. Oliver, uh, just put some paprika on it and put it back in the microwave, pull that siren back out, and bam, that thing is new. Sometimes you just got to put a little paprika on life. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that it wasn't the accomplishment for me that has mm -hmm. been the biggest um, area of my life in 2021. Mm -hmm. It's what now? Okay. You know, um, meditating on what you've done mm -hmm. is the biggest enemy of your next success okay and i just didn't have time to meditate i mean it's a nice accolade but what you gonna do with it ma'am <laughs> so and i just want people to feel encouraged that you know even i mean and it's a big deal i'm not i'm not belittling it all i'm saying is that you got to keep things in perspective because what you don't yeah. want to get is stuck in a holding pattern yeah. where you feel like you can't land yeah um, and um everybody has a right to pause yeah. And decide what their next A plan is going to be. Absolutely. I love that uh, a new plan A. And I want to say that that is probably also more true for people who have multiple talents, uh, writing, singing, uh, and, and, and some of us within the church body, I guess also outside of the church body too, experience that uh, diverse callings. You're going to have some new plan A's. And then, and also, the more that God has for you to do, you're going to have some new plan A's. You have a plan A for each one of these things that God wants you to do. Because let me tell you, having a radio show was mm -hmm. a plan A for me. I didn't even, I didn't, I didn't ask for, not that I know of, maybe it was in my heart, <laughs> but it, 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 it showed up in, uh, 20, 20 in 2020 20, no it showed up in 2021 20, it showed up this 2021. year yeah yeah so yeah it's hard to keep up these days but <laughs> um yeah i just want to throw that out there and as you were talking uh dr white about uh the tread on the tire oh i could i could see it and i could feel it so i love that you gave us that physical illus visual illustration um what are some reasons that we miss the signs of burnout? What do you think are some of the reasons that we miss the signs of burnout? Denial. Mm. Uh, th that's a big one. Um, I'm not, it's kind of like what the kids say. I'm not, I'm not sleepy. You know, it's just my eyes are burning. Okay. Like, you're not, you're not, your eyes, you don't have salt in your eyes. You're sleepy. You yeah. know, you have to convince. And as adults, we act like, well, we are children, you know, we're God's children, but we, you know, somebody's child. And we just kind of never grow out of that in some areas of our life. We just don't want to acknowledge the obvious that you need to stop. Uh, it's time to go in a different direction. It's time to do something a little different in the area that you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, another one is stick to itness. Mm -hmm. We just feel, and Black women have this. Um, it has just been a generational um, challenge. Mm -hmm. I won't say problem, but definitely a challenge. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, it's a testament to our strength, our fortitude. But anybody, anybody with a goal or a mind mm -hmm. to 
do the hard work, you yeah. know, um, that stick to itness can bite you. Yeah. And next thing you know, you're burned out and you talk about no trade, you know, you don't even have wheels on the car anymore. Oh, <laughs> you know, Lord. you you hitchhiking. We on um, blocks. Bay. <laughs> that ain't it's nothing cool about that. Ain't nobody getting nowhere like that. No, yeah. nobody's putting it. I mean, you know, unless you're trying to exercise, other than that, you're riding. Yeah. You can't go back. And if you if you have something where it's pulling you back, that's a tall tale sign of burnout. Um yeah. last thing was mistaking um grit for uh, attachment. And sometimes uh, when we're burned out, we're so attached, mm-hmm. malattached in, in some cases, but we're, we're so attached to what we're doing that mm-hmm. we confuse it with grit, inertia. Like I, I, have, I have the ability to, to, you know, stay the course. Well, let me just tell you, the course ended like two miles ago. Yeah. You know, um, what you have is an attachment to something that's not, it's not beneficial for your life. Right. Um, it's not going to leave a legacy for your children. Um, it's going to cause manifestations of cancers and things in your body. Uh, these are the hard things that we have to consider when we're helping people. We're helpers. Mm-hmm. And you have to let people know, listen, I don't know why you keep doing it, but I want to give you permission to stop. Mm, I like that. Permission to stop. Yeah. Yeah. I but also, you have to accept it. You know, if you're in denial about burnout, you mm-hmm. this is this is happening. But you can you can you can stop. Yeah, yeah. I I also think that we miss um, the signs of burnout because we're too busy. Mm-hmm. Um, we're not in tune with ourselves. Yes. And I want to put a plug in here that if we are spending time journaling or meditating we're more likely to notice those signs or hear God telling us, Hey, go somewhere and sit down. You know, (laughs) this, all this that came and see, there's like, okay, you do what God asked you to do. You're fruitful with it, but then people start adding on other stuff to it. And so they, they are well-meaning. And so you just have to be careful and keep following God. You know, um, but and he God is not going to push you to the level of you're so exhausted that you're not any good anymore. He's not going to do that. That's not. That's not his way. He got too many people. It's it's hard. You know, that it's it's really challenging for people to accept that what they're doing is no longer no longer a good fit for their life. Mm -hmm. Um. In the survey, I I was reading in that same Indeed survey that Generation Xers have increased by 7%, you know, uh, burnout. You know, they they're burned out. And it's crazy because that's our generation. Mm -hmm. Um, And we got a long way to go. (laughs) I mean, mean, we're not, you know, we're not um, as young as we used to be, but definitely not as old as we're going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're just at the place where we need to do something different. Yeah. And, and I find that people are looking for confirmation. Yeah. Yeah. They're looking for, con- but it's, it's hard. It's, it's hard to say out of your mouth that my life has, is changed and I'm catching up to my life. And that's how life is sometimes. Listen, the job ain't the job no more. Um, the, the church ain't the church no more. The, the situation in the community is not the same. Things have changed. Things People have changed. are protesting different. People are yeah. expressing themselves, um, in more effective ways. We don't have to keep doing it that way. And I, I mentioned right. my aunt Peggy, she's, I'm going to say my aunt Peggy's in her nineties, sharpest seasoned woman. I know, <laughs> uh, she posts better than me. Um, yeah, it's just everything she does. I'm just, but I, 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 I attribute it to her ability to transition when necessary. Yeah. So how effective am I going to be to my daughters and my son 
-hmm. in 30 years when yeah. as we we've we've said before i have no more tread on my tire my lord well come through god mm. help us all yeah. <laughs> yeah so in getting um to that how can we avoid burnout what are some steps that we need to take in order to avoid burnout well i'm, I'm gonna give you the um not so good first okay and i'm so glad you asked me this question and actually you know full transparency everybody i'm so glad she asked me this ahead of time and i didn't have to think about this impromptu because i definitely would not have had this answer okay but um the truth is sometimes we can't hmm. sometimes we cannot avoid burnout and i'm only saying this not to say that it's impossible to avoid i'm i, I want to say it for the people in the back who are already burned out okay hmm. Um, don't get stuck with the fact that you got burned out and you didn't acknowledge it. Um, sometimes we have, as it's a human nature to keep going when clearly the car is sputtering and telling you to stop. Yeah. Okay. You can, you can really like drive yourself and just not even realize that it's not good anymore. So I think sometimes you can't avoid it, but if you do, it's just, I just really have this, this one thing. And that is believe yourself the first time. The first mm. time when you feel a change of heart mm. on the job. Mm. I think coach Carlos says it best, journal it, write mm. a prayer down about it. I'm feeling a little way laid. I'm, I'm, um, I'm frustrated. I don't know what this feeling is. Some people get scared when the initial burnout happens. Bless you. Thank because you. they're like, this cannot be happening. Well, you can avoid it if you listen to your heart. Generally, right. your heart is, is going to be an indicator. Also, your feelings and your emotions. Mm -hmm. They don't tell you what to do. They're not going to say, I ain't feeling it. I'm getting ready to quit this job. Yeah. Okay. You have to be responsible. It's not going, well, my anger made me do it. No, your choice to write your letter made you do it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But your feelings can say, well, I ain't feeling it. And I don't even know why. Believe mm -hmm. yourself the first time and say out loud, not in your head. You know what I'm saying? Not even just in your prayer time with God. I'm burned out. Hmm. Yeah. Decide if it's a safe conversation to have with your supervisor, you know, mm -hmm. like to avoid burnout. Well, I got to get to a place where I at least acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you don't you don't realize. Let me just say this, because I think we need to stick with our tire analogy. Mm -hmm. Nobody replaces tire before the tree get low. I'm just being honest. <laughs> I don't. I mean, now I don't want it to be. I don't want the metal to show, you know, because that's. You in hospice care. Your tire on hospice. You don't want to be. On the road. You want to be on the side of the road. So, but I'm just saying that. No, you don't. You need to replace it before the wire pop. But I just mm -hmm. want people to know that it's just not always ideal. The way that you fuel keep yourself from burning out is to make sure you get a regular checkup, check in with your mental health professional, make sure you know a checkup, not a I'm depressed and I need to go get me a therapist. Okay. Yeah. Like you're seeing your doctor for your yearly physical. Yeah. To me, you should have biannual mental health checkups. Yeah. Go at least once a year when you have your mammogram or when you have your prostate checked or yeah. when your babies have their, their yearly physicals. I like that. Um, and then you can say, well, you know what? I, maybe I am burned out. Sometimes you need another professional to tell you that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, if you're already in the middle of it, Okay, that's well and good, but you can prevent it just by the symptoms, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I think that you do a really good job, Carla, at reminding us each Tuesday of, at how these check-ins that you do with, you know, your following and your base, let them know that if nothing else, I can go back and get a little nugget to maintain who I am um, on Coach Carla. I don't have to wait until my next mental health appointment. And let me just tell you, as a person who is a therapist, has her own, th has her own therapist, it's mm -hmm. good between those times to be able to check in with some positive affirmations 
and yeah. somebody that's just talking about mental, you know, yeah. on a regular. Like yeah. I can put that that little feather in my hat um, and go for that walk instead of back to that desk. Yeah. So yeah, you can make some different choices. And let me say this, believe that simple, small steps can make a big difference. Believe that simple, small steps can make a big difference. And I'm saying that because over the past couple of weeks, um, with, with, well, not only with clients, but just people in my life, yeah. it's like, well, what you're saying to me, that's just too simple for that to make <laughs> that big of a difference. But, mm, you know, everything kind of just takes me, I, I think about there's just some, some simple, there's some simple phrases in the Bible, peace be still. Mm. And when we hear it, peace comes over us. So if a simple phrase can make a difference in your life, or you can feel better after one song, then what about a word from a good friend? Just taking the time to talk to that one good friend on the phone. Or what about the affirmation that your therapist is asking you to do? And also trusting that when you pay your money to go see a professional, that they're asking you to do something that they know works. If you don't have that trust in your professional, then you either got to work on your trust or you need another professional that you can trust in that way. That part. Yeah. <laughs> because the simple things really do work. And in fact, there's a phrase that says um, in the world, keep it simple, silly. OK, mm -hmm. kiss, keep it simple, silly. And we we came up with that because. People don't believe that the simple things work. Wow. Just think about I love it. That. Just think about it. Since Charnay talked about the tire, okay, getting your oil changed is a simple, small step that keeps your engine running. That's it. That keeps your engine going the way that it needs to go so you can keep driving. Come on now. Now, that was the Amen. oldest... That was the whole. I heard. I felt all of that. <laughs> that was the whole spirit because I didn't write that on the paper. Well, and you know, my mom used to say, "You want a car, but you don't have what it takes to. You don't have the money to put the gas in it, the oil to maintain it. You need somebody to even take you to get the license. Uh, you got to pass the written. Um, mm -hmm. Somebody's got to insure it. And mm -hmm. so there's a lifestyle that I think we all want. I think we have a right to it. I certainly believe we have a right to it. But at the same time, at some point, you have to say, what am I willing to do to maintain this life? And does that include self-care? Do I know my love language? Or do I have a professional leisure? I learned about that in my doctoral program. You know, uh, I'm a performer. I love mm -hmm. to perform. I sing every chance I get, sometimes just to the trees in my park. Yes. It's my it has become my uh, when, when I realized that it was not the forerunner, at least at this stage in my professional life, I decided that it could be my professional leisure mm -hmm. and I could still love it and I could still serve and I can still get paid from it. Uh, and but I have something that helps me maintain mm -hmm. in the midst of it. Um, and, and it gives me endurance to be able to sing. When all those years where I was singing to myself, wasn't sharing it to anybody, it was hurting my voice. You know, it, it was hurting my voice because I wasn't choosing to share the gift that God had given me, which he gave it to me to share. It, mm. I can't covet it or, or even, I don't even have the right to think that, you never have the right to think that your gifts are no good and that they only belong to you. Mm. That is just flat selfish. Okay. Um, it's like taking a, a, a coin and putting it under a rock. There's no investment there in you mm -hmm. or anybody else. So yeah. those little pieces, like you say, those are simple things where if you're not doing it professionally anymore, but it brings you life, do it anyway. Yeah. Do the yeah. simple and burnout is less likely to happen. Probably going to happen at some point, um, just like everything in life, yeah. but it doesn't have to happen today. 
and you can avoid it. You can avoid it in your relationships. You can avoid it on the job, that business you're trying to start, um, even in taking care of your mental health and your body. You can mm-hmm. avoid your body from burning out. Yeah. Um, you just have to steady wins the race. And once you realize that your heart is telling you something ain't ticking, you can stay in denial. Yeah. And you can risk pieces of your life, maybe not dying today, mm-hmm. but certainly, mm-hmm. you know, there's there's also a thing called a, a slow death. Mm. Um, and, and you know what? Uh, let me just say this too. This came to me earlier today. I was talking to my mentor, um, creating memories. When you get to a certain age, like we are at, um, you, the memories begin to, you, you got like this compilation of memories. So what's happening now is not always as memorable. Mm-hmm. Um, so choosing memories and meditating on those things that were that are happening now so that you can have them in the future to talk about. Mm. Or going back over things that you didn't take the time to really taste or smell or live, looking mm. at those pictures. Mm-hmm. Um, those are things, because what happens is when you don't create new memories, you tend to lose your memory along the way. Mm. So when you don't, when that middle part of your life is not being satisfied and you're, you're burning yourself out, you know, not mm-hmm. giving yourself the regular dose of love and compassion that everybody deserves to give themselves. Yeah. Listen, it, it gets to a place where you don't create more memories and you stop living. And then at, at a certain age, you just begin to exist until you die. Yeah. And I don't under any condition believe that's biblical, scriptural, spiritual. I don't even think it's um, pa- patriotic. <laughs> you know, I think that goes against the fundamentals of the democracy. You know? <laughs> like, how you gonna go against the USA? <laughs> you know? Yes. Leave you it can't up be to saved, you can at least be American. <laughs> leave it up to Dr. White. I'm telling you, leave it up to Dr. White. But what she's but what but what Dr. Charnay is talking about is being present in your own yeah. life because mm-hmm. it's so easy for us to, and I've seen people get back into that. Um Go to bed, get up, go to work, eat, go to sleep, go to bed, get up, work. You're not, you're not living. You're not enjoying your life. And uh, there need to be meaningful experiences. There need to be uh, times where you can say, this brings me happiness. I enjoy doing this. I got a chance to do this Saturday. I got a chance to do this Wednesday because we weren't meant to just, I mean, yeah, we got to go get bread for ourselves. But that ain't all we was meant to do. You know, we were meant to be fulfilled and enjoy life. And if we ain't going to do that, what are we doing? You know, Carla, I've started painting. Um, I'm I'm starting to paint and I've always liked to to paint. I I think I've been doing it for maybe eight years now, but I'm doing it more frequently and um, somebody up oh, you bake today that's awesome mm-hmm. you can it. bring me some Shamel Shamel said hey, she baked man. and it made her happy go on bring me them cookies I know you made some cookies <laughs> but you know painting a it's a first of all it's a sense of accomplishment creating something that has never been created before mm-hmm. I don't care if you copy and it off somebody else it's still your original project because you put your your hand to the canvas mm-hmm. but just the process of it um, I don't know who that's for. I, I'm just throwing it out for my own self care and mm-hmm. what I would like to incorporate in my in my practice. Mm-hmm. We we have seen a boom in painting, and we wonder mm-hmm. why. Well, people like to be creative. Mm-hmm. People are not creating things. Um, mm-hmm. They're they're we're learning as as uh, the world evolves that the brain has to have stimulus. Yeah. Or else it it just begins to think that you're not exercising me, so I don't work. So people are using painting as an option. So I just throw that out there. Doesn't have to be that, but um, to create new memories, you have to do things that are memorable. Mm -hmm, And I have mm -hmm. a little spot in my office where I keep my most current painting. I just put two little tacks on the wall and I just put it there. And when I create another one, I take that one down, take it home and I put the the new one. Mm -hmm, And it just mm -hmm. reminds me, I remember when I painted it, I try to think about, work out some of the things going on in my heart when I'm painting. 
Yeah. So yeah. It, it's more than just what's on my wall. It's it's taking care of me, keeping me from um, not being my best self for my children, uh -huh, um, uh -huh. for for my clients, for any yeah. any any loved one in my life. It's important that I take care of me. Um, this is taking care of me. This was an opportunity to be my most Chardonnay self, and I don't yeah. turn those down for nobody. The Chard <laughs> the Chard the Chardonnay ness. Got to do Nene at some point in the day. <laughs> 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 Stay you, Carla. Okay, Charnay ness. Uh, <laughs> Charnay and I have this song that we made up in college, and, and Charnay still remembers it. I'm not going to make you sing it, but I love, I just love us being able to go into that because yeah. we were in college uh, 15, uh, 20 years ago. And so the fact that we still remember that and can broke off into that song is is wonderful. The not not a jubilee song, but the one we made up. Yes, I love it. I love it. So um let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, well, I feel like we got some really good information in. Dr. White, I have enjoyed having you, of course, on uh Couch Combo with Coach Carla. And uh, do you have any final thoughts that you would like to give uh, to the people on burnout? I, I, I would like to just say, um, you know, to everybody, thank you for listening. And I thought that um, dealing with the consequences of burnout, both personally and professionally, um, is a really big deal. Um, just remember, you have the right to pause. Um, it can ruin your relationships and it can definitely feel as if it's something psychological. And I feel that we need to say that tonight, that sometimes it feels like our mind is playing tricks on us. Um, something that's manifesting physically can feel mental and something that's mental can feel physical. Mm -hmm. And so the, the best thing that I can tell you to do in the midst of however you feel mm -hmm. is pause. Just yeah. pause. Take the next 48 hours to yourself in a place where you can have peace. Yeah. In a place where you can pray and spend time with your creator. Talk to people you care about um, that feed your life. Just, just pause. Um, you don't have to have all the answers. They have um, professionals. They gave us real good degrees that um, most of us are still to help you. It doesn't have to be me. It doesn't have to be Carla. Um, but there's somebody more than capable of help, helping you tease out uh, whatever you're feeling burned out about. And even if it's being a mother, even if it's being an aunt, even if it is being a spouse, um, something highly personal or a caretaker to your parent, um, whatever that situation is, mm -hmm. it's personal to you. Mm -hmm. And um, you have the right to pause and uh, go and be incredible. You know, I say live deliciously, mm. you know, um, every day. Yeah. And you're going to taste it. You should feel it in your bones. I remember, uh, what's his name? Uh, not Miles Moreau. Uh, Les Brown says his mama, his mama makes sweet potato pie. And it was so good. He had to take his shoes off and wiggle <laughs> his toes. Oh yes, my God! Yes. <laughs> I am, I'm for that, you know. I, I'm like, listen. Sometimes in life, you got it. You got to eat it, and you just got to take your shoes off, feel it in your feet. Yeah. <laughs> well, I liked a lot of the look, a lot of the phrases that were shared on tonight. I feel like I need a little notebook just for the phrases. Live deliciously. Yes, I love it. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Charnay, uh, Dr. Charnay is out of. The Dr. Charnay White is out of the greater Atlanta area. Uh, Dr. White, tell the people um, about how they can get in contact with you if um, they want to take advantage of, take advantage of your services and the things that you have to offer in Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you, Carla. Uh, well, I appreciate the opportunity to do that. Uh, my name is C-A-A-R-N-E. Uh, you can go to Charnay.com just like it's spelled. It's all, also phonetically on Facebook.com, Charnay by Grace. And um, you can find me on all social media platforms. Um, I'm, I'm doing better <laughs> about making
<laughs> sure I post in all those areas. But uh, I am a certified Christian therapist. Um, I have a telehealth as well as an in-person practice. I'm a full-time school counselor and I love all of my babies there. Um, and I have a lot of things that I offer, but mostly just an opportunity to help you uh, go from better to well. And yeah. I think that everybody is getting better. You may not know it today, um, but together we can figure out what that better is. And better is only as good as you can become well. So Chardonnay.com there, I have uh, all of my devotional series. Um, they're usually three to five days long. And I think there's probably about like 32 of them on, on the website now. Mm -hmm. All of my books are digital downloads as well mm -hmm. as uh, my music. <laughs> yeah, and I will cover anything. If you inbox me, DM me, say, "Listen, I just need to hear a little bit of this. Can you give it to me?" Yes, yes I will give it my Anita Baker, the best that I got. So, um, and I, I love to perform and sing, but my truly, my my number one goal in life is to be a helper. Mm -hmm. And so, if anything I've said today resonates with you, and you think that might be something you could take advantage of. Mm -hmm. uh, inbox me, DM me, email me, charnaybygrace at gmail.com or charnay.com. And um, I'm here. And Charnay, you also do um, the lives that you do sometimes there at what time in the morning? Now, when I am live, it's um, five. It's, it's usually uh, five central. And six Eastern Standard Time. I can't do the math on that on the uh, yeah. West Coast, but I do have a few West Coast folks that are dedicated at their 3 a.m. hour to check me out. Yeah, um, we have revamped uh, Shine by Grace, so I'm doing less lives uh, on a daily basis, but I I am doing them because I'm recording them yeah. and putting them in my devotional series. Some okay. of them are free on YouTube, so if you yeah. go to Shine by Grace on YouTube, you can catch some of them for free there. Um, yeah. And yeah, just check me out. I just got it to where um, once you click on a devotional that you want, it'll automatically take you to all of the links in, in succession. And mm -hmm. so that's a new feature that I just figured out how to work the other day. So um, one of my friends was making a purchase and I was like, this needs to be more orderly. So, you know, it's, it's all about growth and, yeah. and I'm not above learning and just making mistakes. I make a lot of mistakes. I get denied. Let me just tell y'all, me and Carla, Coach Carla, we get more rejections than we get acceptances, but every single acceptance is worth it. So, uh, you know, it, it's whatever you're going through is definitely worth it. So check, check, check out those devotionals because they are, well, I just preached myself into oblivion a few minutes ago before we started and I needed it. That's my own sermon. So, oh yeah, uh, I love uh, listening to Charnay's information. I have joined her, and I know that's a God thing at five a.m. Central in the morning to listen, honey, live child, cause baby. And I'm talking about God be waking me up, talking about, uh huh, you finna go listen to Charnay. But it's amazing the things that uh, it's amazing. You know what, Carla? You might you might just be pushing the pillows in which in which my life needs to be, so I can get up tomorrow and be on the gray spot. And I do I miss being on the gray spot every day of uh, the weekdays. I, you know, it, it's such a blessing. I'm way more blessed than I feel like anybody might be able to get from me. Um, so. Well, um, I know how much work I know how much work that is. So I'm not I'm not pushing you in any direction. I'm just letting the people know how much I enjoy listening to Charnay. You know, Charnay Spin, Dr. White. I'm have I'm 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 learning to say Dr. White, y'all. I got to get used to that. Um, um, Dr. White has some wonderful information uh, that's available to you all, and uh, you can follow me uh, www.coachcarla.com. That's where you can check out my journal and. Um, you can also get a portion of this broadcast on Sunday at 1 p.m. 104.1 FM WABN The Trend, where I do the Combo with Coach Carla radio show. So we have enjoyed you on tonight. Uh Charnay, we're gonna are we gonna let the people have a little bit of a little bit of our song? Yeah, let's do it. Yes, let's do it. And I was just singing this with an old Jubilee singer. She wasn't in our group that year. But I had to just give it to her. My feet can't take, take it. it. Sit hey. on down. My feet, My feet can't, can't take, take it. it. Hey.
Hey, my feet can't take it. Sit, sit, sit on down, yeah. Sit, 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 on. sit on down. <laughs> That's what singers do when you be in those heels Ooh. and you just you need Jesus to help your feet. We had to do all that Jubilee singing and our feet would be hurting after performance. And it, it would just be like trying to find a wall to lay against, take these shoes off these feet. So we came on, we came on through with the uh, feet can't take it. We got to sit, sit, sit on will. down. Ah, we will watch it. Hey, yeah. Will. We'll probably yep. remember us singing that song. Yeah, yes. my feet can't take it. Got we to just sit, make sit it up as down. we go along. <laughs> listen, listen, Carla, I know it's about to cut us off. Remember that that van that used to hum and we would harmonize with it as, it, as we would accelerate? Do you remember I that? I remember that just a little bit. I remember that. I remember that just oh. a little bit. Just a little bit. So much fun. I love you, Carla. So, uh, so, mu so many sacrifices. And uh, I just want you to know that I got my two T-shirts in the mail today uh, for the 150th anniversary of the Fish Jubilee Singers and my baseball cap. So I will be sporting those probably on tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, man, I wish I had gotten those. It's uh, probably, it may still be available now. It may still yeah, be I gotta available. I got to check it out. I'm definitely going to okay. check it out. And it's actually, it's really nice. I, I, it's, I'll it's, show it to you. Well, shoot, it's downstairs. It's okay. But I take a I take a picture. I take a picture. So I can see it. Yeah. It's really the the whole, you know, emblem with the Jubilee. Yeah, fingers. I need the link. Send me the link. Yeah. Okay. I got you. Okay. Well, all you right, all friend. we thank you all so much for joining us and come back on Tuesday nights, 8 p.m. Central for Couch Combo with Coach Carla. Good night. <laughs>